This is Cody Orris with Cody Orris Sound, and I'm going to show you how to set up a remote VO recording session. By this I mean I'm in one location, the VO artist is in another, and the end client or clients are in another location or multiple locations all at the same time. And the goal of this is for the client to be able to talk to the VO artist freely and be able to view my session to give direction and hear it in high quality audio as easily as possible. Now there are several ways to do this and several programs you can use to do this, but this I found is a way of doing it for almost free. It still provides broadcast quality results. For today, I'm gonna be using Pro Tools as my DAW of choice. The first program we're gonna use is called Source Connect Now. Just Google Source Connect Now and it should be the first result. Now, Source Connect has a standalone version that is used wildly all over the world for VO recording. It's a voice over IP program that also has a backend redundancy to it that if there's any internet drop, it'll actually repair that drop in the file in inside Pro Tools. Source Connect Now is a free version of essentially the same thing. It doesn't have the redundancy, although the dropouts are extremely, extremely rare. And if one does happen, just record that line. Now this gets you 95% of the capabilities of the standalone version, but as the studio, you would probably need the Pro version here, and that starts at $1,500. For free, this is pretty good. So create your free account and hit Start Connection. I typically just send in great 128 mono because that's all the artist needs to hear me and the client in. I want to limit my bandwidth and use as much as possible to send to the end client. Max number of four guests per session, but we only need one, the VO artist. And I just created passkey, Cody, connect now. One thing to mention that this is only available in Google Chrome, but most people are running Chrome anyway, and if not, it's free, you can just download it. So now that we're in, you can see it's essentially a chat room. Here is me. And then we can invite the artist. Hit invite, set a preset to them, best model 256K, because that's what we want to hear them in. This is a high quality audio stream that will make it sound like they're here recording with you, as long as they're using good equipment on their end. But if they're a professional VO artist, they are. They'll then create this preset on the end of this URL, copy to clipboard and just email it to them and include your passkey. Or you can do that from here as well. Once they click that link and enter the password, they'll show up right here. Now we need to get audio from Source Connect into Pro Tools. And for that, we're going to use Loopback. Now, besides our DAW, Pro Tools in this case, this is the only paid program we're going to be using in this whole thing. It's about $100, but well worth it. This allows me to turn almost any program that I have into an audio device. Simply click New Virtual Device, label it whatever you would like, and select the source, Google Chrome in this case, and then click Pass Through, hit Delete. You have now created an audio device where anything that plays inside Google Chrome, aka Source Connect, is now gonna be linked to a set of outputs that we can then bring into Pro Tools. Also have mute when capturing selected. That way when you're in Pro Tools, you're also not hearing audio from Chrome, you're only hearing it through Pro Tools, can monitor through Pro Tools, and can completely control it through Pro Tools. Then open Audio Media Devices. Select your Pro Tools aggregate, and you'll see that from Google Chrome, or whatever you called it, it's gonna show up here and just select it to add it to the aggregate, the two input device. Inside Pro Tools, go to Setup, I.O., then in Inputs, Create an input called from Chrome, or whatever you like, by selecting new path, stereo, and create. You will then see these left and right options, and you need to know where to put them. That can be found here in the audio devices aggregate. Like that device, Google Chrome, and it'll highlight what inputs it is. Seven and eight in my case, so I have the left and right going to seven and eight. Hit okay. Open up an aux track in Pro Tools here. In my case, I call it from VO. Like that interface, and then anything that plays inside Chrome will play here. For example, if I play this test tone, it shows up in Pro Tools. I then route that in a bus called from VO to a track that I'm gonna record to. From VO, capturing the left side just because it's mono. If I arm that, we can hear it. We are now recording anything the VO artist says in Source Connect in 256 kilobits per second into Pro Tools. Now let's hear from the client. For this demonstration, I'm going to use Zoom because Zoom is increasing in popularity and Zoom sends in a high quality audio stream and stereo as well. So if you're playing back any mixes, they hear it in stereo. So once again, in loopback, we're gonna create another virtual device and call it from Zoom, or whatever you'd like. Sources, select Zoom, and again, mute when capturing. And that'll once again, just go to a set of output channels and delete the pass-through that might show up here. As you can see, I've done this for Microsoft Teams and Spotify as well. And once again, go to your audio aggregate and add from Zoom. Again, it's a two input device. Then once again, in Pro Tools, set up IO, input, create one called from Zoom and use the corresponding inputs, which once again shows up here once you click it. 5, 6. Hit OK. I then have another aux track here called From Client. I set From Zoom as my input, and now anything that plays in Zoom will play here. Test speaker. And there we have it inside Pro Tools. So we can hear them, but they can't hear us yet, and they can't hear each other. So let's create output devices from Pro Tools. For that, we're going to need another program called Black Hole. Simply Google Black Hole Audio. It should be the first result and just install it as you normally would. This is very similar to Soundflower, but I have found it to be a bit more stable. Once you have installed Black Hole, it will show up in loopback 
as another source that you can select when you create a new virtual device as you have before. Create the new device, select black hole, and you'll see it is 16 channels. I have created two, one called two artists and another one called two client. With the key distinction that in one of them, I have one and two going to outputs one and two of that device. And then in two client, I have three and four going to outputs one and two of that device. To create these links, all you do is draw the line, then highlight to delete. Then back to audio MIDI setup, add black hole, 16 by 16, then back to Pro Tools, set up IO. This time we're gonna go to output. I'm gonna create two outputs, send to artist, send to client as you normally would. New path, stereo, and label them what you like. You'll notice, send to artist, yeah, I have set as five, six, because five, six is my first two channels of black hole. Send to client, seven, eight, which is my second set of stereo pair in black hole and the output channels. That then corresponds here in loopback. One and two, which is five and six in Pro Tools, going to one and two. And then seven, eight, which is three and four in Black Hole, going to outputs one and two in their respective audio devices. Now, if we create two Mox tracks, I call one two VO and one two client. Create a two VO bus, a two client bus to send things to it, and then select the interface and the outputs. Send to artist and send to client. I currently routed my microphone to these outputs and we see them showing up here. Then in loopback, if you look at one, which I routed as two VO, if I mute that output, it no longer shows up in loopback. As you can see, it's only playing in 3-4, which is to client. And if I do the reverse, the same thing happens. Now 1 and 2 is playing, but not 3 and 4 in loopback. That means now we have two discrete mixes that we can send one mix to the artist and one mix to the client so they aren't hearing themselves. We're not creating any sort of feedback loop. Mix minus. And for them to hear you, simply select two artists as your input, then hit refresh with new settings. They should now be able to hear you. And in Zoom, set your input as to client. Turn off automatically adjust microphone volume so anything you do in Pro Tools doesn't get affected by Zoom and enable stereo. You can see I'm showing up here. Now we have all our basic routing, getting in and out of Pro Tools, but now there's more we can do inside of Pro Tools. I have several aux sends set up, to client and to VO. So anything coming from client, I want to go to the VO artist. Or also anything from the VO artist, which I'm recording over here, I want to go to the client, but I don't want to send the VO artist to the VO artist because they'll hear a delay and I don't want to send client to the client because they will hear a delay. And then over here, I have an aux input of my microphone with a little bit of processing on it being sent to client bus and to the VO bus. On my microphone as well, I also have this great little free program called Mutomatic. So as soon as I hit play or record in Pro Tools, it mutes my microphone. So if I make a noise during the recording, I don't distract the VO artist. And that's basically it. So to quickly review, once we created our Source Connect session, we use Loopback to capture anything from the Chrome browser. We incorporate that into our Pro Tools aggregate and make that an input for Pro Tools and have that as an aux track so we can send it to a recording channel or whatever you'd like. So to get our audio from Zoom, we create another virtual device from Zoom and select Zoom as our source, get rid of the pass-through, sending one and two, two outputs one and two. In our aggregate, add from Zoom. In Pro Tools, set up I.O add from Zoom as an input and use the corresponding inputs that we see over here. Now to get audio out of Pro Tools, we once again use Loopback to create two new virtual devices with Black Hole as the source for each one. One and two going to one and two on two artist, three and four going to one and two in two client. Once again, in the aggregate, add Black Hole, 16 by 16. In outputs, create two new outputs, send artist, send to client by creating new paths and use the corresponding outputs five and six that you can view here in the aggregate. Inside of Pro Tools, from VO, record that to a track. Our recorded track, send that to client and send anything the client says to the VO artist. Send your microphone to both client and VO and use the Mutomatic to mute it when you're doing any recording or playing back. And that's basically it. Like I said, there's many ways to do this, but I found this way to be extremely reliable and very easy for the client because now on Zoom, you can do a screen share of your session and it's like they're right there with you. It's easy for them, it's easy for you and you get the quality result you need. I could, of course, use the standalone version as well, and simply in your to and from VO artist, you would put the Source Connect link just right here. This has been Cody Orsound showing you how I set up my remote VO recording sessions. If you have any questions, please feel free to message me at CodyOrs at gmail.com or to contact me or just to view some of my work at CodyOrs.com. And if you need any recordings, mixing, mastering, sound design, music edits, dialogue edits, pretty much anything post-production at all, I'm sure I can help. Thank you.